branch line engines. Percy's predicament. Toby brought Henrietta to the top station. Percy was grumbly shunting. Hello, Percy, he said. I see Daisy's left the milk again. I'll have to make a special journey with it, I suppose, grumbled Percy. Anyone would think I would nothing to do. Toby pondered the problem. Tell you what, he said at last. I'll take the milk. You fetch my trucks. The drivers and the station master agreed, and both engines set off. They thought it would be a nice change. Percy trundled away to the quarry. He had never been there before. It's steep, he thought, but I can manage. Trucks don't dare to play tricks on me now. He marshaled them in a lordly way. Hurry along there, he said, and bumped them if they dallied. The trucks were annoyed. This is Toby's place, they grumbled. Percy's got no right to poke his funnel up here and push us around. They whispered and passed the word. Pay Percy out! At last, they were all arranged. Come along, puffed Percy sharply. No nonsense. We'll give him nonsense, giggled the trucks. But they followed so quietly that Percy thought they were completely under control. They rumbled along the twisting line till they saw ahead the notice saying, All trains stop to pin down brakes. Beep, 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 whistled Percy. Brakes guard, please. But before he could check them, the truck surged forward. On, on, they cried. Percy, taken by surprise, could not stop them. And in a moment, they were careering down the hill. Help, help, whistled Percy. The man on duty at the street crossing rushed to warn traffic with his red flag, but was too late to switch Percy to the runaway siding. A slow-moving cockerel lost his tail feathers as Percy thundered across, but Percy couldn't bother with him. He had other things to worry about. Frantically trying to grip the rails, he slid past the engine shed into the yard. Beep, beep, look out, he whistled. His driver and fireman jumped clear. Percy shut his eyes and waited for the end. At the end of the yard, there are sheds where workmen shape rough stone brought from the quarry. Then they load it into trucks, which are pulled to another siding out of the way. A train of these stood here when Percy came slithering down. The guard had left his van. He was talking to the station master. They heard frantic whistling and a splintering crash. They rushed from the office. The brake van was in smithereens. Percy, still whistling fit to burst, was perched on a couple of trucks while his own trucks were piled up behind him. The fat control arrived next day. Toby and Daisy had helped to remove most of the wreckage, but Percy still stood on his perch. We must now try, said the fat controller crossly, to run the branch line with Toby and the diesel. He had put us in an awkward predicament. I'm sorry, sir. You can stay there, the fat controller went on, till we are ready. Perhaps it would teach you to be careful with trucks. Percy sighed. The trucks wobbled beneath his wheels. He quite understood about awkward predicaments. The fat controller spoke severely to Daisy too. My engines do not tell lies, he said. They work hard with no shirking. I send lazy engines away. Daisy was ashamed. However, he went on, Toby says you worked hard yesterday after Percy's accident. So you shall have another chance. Thank you, sir, said Daisy. I will work hard, sir. Toby says he'll help me. Excellent. What Toby doesn't know about branch line problems, the fat controller chuckled, such as our balls, isn't worth knowing. Our Toby's an experienced engine. Thomas came back next day, and Percy was sent to be mended. Annie and Clara were delighted to see Thomas again, and he took them for a run at once because they hadn't been out while he was away. Thomas, Toby, and Daisy are now all friends. Daisy often takes the milk for Thomas, and when Toby is busy, she takes Henrietta. Toby has taught Daisy a great deal. She shooed a cow off the line all by herself the other day. That shows you, doesn't it? And that's the end of the Branch Line Engines book, written by the Reverend W. Audrey, and read aloud by me, Enrique Jr. Gomez. Please make sure to comment, like, and subscribe on my YouTube channel.